Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Classroom Champions Live. We have another fun session coming up today. It is Tasty Tuesday, and as you guys know, we always have our friend Tiffany Parker for Tasty Tuesday, but today we're going to turn the tables a little bit, and I'm going to have Tiffany, who is a Team USA bobsledder, former heptathlete, but also a health expert. I'm going to have Tiffany talk to us a little bit about her favorite healthy snacks. Tiffany, how are you this morning? I'm doing really well. Hey, Em, and everyone at home. Very interesting to be on the other side of the table today. <laughs> oh, well, it's going to be so much fun. We have a whole bunch of people watching at home. We have McKenna. Good morning, McKenna. Thanks for being here today. We have Dylan. We have Miss Nosiar. Good morning, everybody. And we have Charlotte. Thanks for joining us this morning. All right, so Tiffany. Let's start out. I want to show all of the kids at home your awesome sport. So Tiffany is a Team USA bobsledder. Let's take a look at your sport. Tiff, take it away. What, what are we watching here? So this race was in Winterberg. It's actually hilarious because we have Alana Myers-Taylor, that is a classroom champion mentor as a pilot of the sled. Lauren Gibbs, who is also a classroom champions mentor on the right side. And I'm right there on the left side. So up right now in the blue gloves. So we got an awesome opportunity to do four women's bobsled in Winterberg and um, just an amazing, really branch into the sport. Um, we've tried to fight for a while to have women be able to compete in the four man. And we were the only four women crew in this four man World Cup race. So it was Ooh. awesome. Uh, it's super cool to be in a sled with awesome, amazing classroom champion um, athletes as well. So just a very good time. And um, probably one of the most fun moments that I can remember and recall right now uh, being in bobsled so far. So yeah, it was a great experience with amazing people and the track is just cool. Four man is just a different feel. You get a chance to be in a sled with three other women and um, it just has a different competitive teamwork, team building vibe um, than two man offers for us. So yeah, this was a uh, four man in Winterberg. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for being a pioneer for women in sport. That is so cool. So you guys were the only female sled in this we were, race. Is that what you were yeah, saying? Yeah, we were the only female sled in this race. Um, and it was a blast. Like the crowd was awesome. We just had a good time, competed well. Um, Alon is one of the most talented pilots in the world. So it was, it was just a good time to be a part of um, just an awesome event and an awesome time and an awesome race. So yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> Very cool. I love it. McKenna's asking if you've heard of Cool Runnings. Absolutely. I love that movie. Um, and it's hilarious because I come from a track and field background as well, where I was a heptathlete and the athletes in Cool Runnings were also, they were 100 meter runners. I did a little oh, bit yeah. more, um, but yeah, it, it's the same transition of speed and power going from track and field into bobsled and both um, sports kind of complement each other. Well, talk to us a little bit about heptathlon. So I'm not yeah. sure if everybody at home knows exactly what that sport is. What is it? I think it's yeah. an incredibly challenging sport. <laughs> you started in heptathlon and then mm -hmm. you switched over to bobsled, right? Yep. So started as a heptathlete. So in the heptathlon, we do seven different events. And so the way that it's broken up is we have four events on the first day, and then we have three events on the next day. And we get a certain amount of points depending on how fast we run, how high we jump, and how far we jump. So in day one, we do 100 meter hurdles. So there's 10 hurdles, we run really fast, get over the hurdles. Then from there, we go high jump. So we run really fast and it's how high we can go backwards over a bar and jump over it. And then from there, we throw shot put. So we'll throw um, about an eight pound ball as far as we can launch it out of a circle ring while staying, keeping our body inside of it. Um, from there, we run 200 meters, which is half of a lap. So if anyone's been to a track, if you run half of it, that's 200 meters around the track. And then we get to go home, do a lot of like recovery, eat good food, fuel your body up again. And we come back the next day. Our first event is long jump. So it's as fast as you can run. There's a white line on the ground and you gotta jump at that white line and not go over it and see how far you can jump in sand, which is cool because I got a chance to just run and jump in sand for lots of years of my life. <laughs> um, and then from there we throw javelin, which 
it's probably like a two-way tie between my most favorite events and uh, javelin is a long, we'll call it a spear that we run and we throw it as far as we can. And it's really cool because it's one, track and field is very special because it's an event where you actually can like see your progress immediately. So the moment that you let the jab go out of your hand, like you know that it's going far. And then the last event that we end with is 800 meters. So we run two laps around the track as fast as we can. And then we are done with the heptathlon in all seven disciplines. Wow, you must be so <laughs> tired at the end of those two days. I can't even imagine. Oh, oh. yeah. I, it's so usually that probably, followed up that probably with a good red light. really well for bobsled, right? Yeah, I mean, I think just for me, having um, the amount of hours that you have to put on your body in speed and power for being a heptathlete, and that is uh, the type of heptathlete that I was. So you can have different types of heptathletes. You can have heptathletes that are a little bit better as sprinters, but may not be as strong and powerful. Or you could have one that's a powerhouse, but like may struggle a little bit with like their speed or endurance. And so it's a very, very, very cool sport because you have to learn how to be good in your strength, your endurance and your speed. And so um, I feel like it for sure prepared me for bobsled because we have very long seasons. Like we could go four to six months for a season, which is like endurance. And it is speed and power where like you have to be powerful and you have to be fast in a very short period of time um, in order to keep the sled's momentum going and moving as it as the driver takes it through the track. So yeah, I feel like it was a very good um, and kind of seamless just trans transition with the type of heptathlete that I was. Great. Well, super cool. Thanks for sharing with us about your sport. <laughs> McKenna yeah. says, I love Tasty Tuesday. And so do we, McKenna. So Tiff, tell us what you're going to prepare for us today. Yeah. So one of my favorites was, we talked about it earlier on, kebabs and fruit. I love fruit. Like fruit is just my go-to healthy snack of choice. So we talk about the green lights. Fruit is my green light love. Um, and so I wanted to kind of do kebabs and I realized I had a lot of fruit left over. So then I just started like, going with other recipes. So I bought uh, some squares, pretzels, some pretzel rods, because they were on sale. And I was just going at it. So there might there's pizzas in there, there's little yogurt squares and kebabs. So you guys get a full just whole outlay of a dish today of Tasty Tuesday. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see it. I love how creative you were. Uh, but I really want to see what you're going to make Let's take it away with the video here. Hey guys, Tiffany here. Um, so like I told you guys before, I was supposed to make a kebab here at the Olympic training um, facility for you guys out of fruit. But last time I had to adapt a little bit and couldn't make the recipe that I wanted to make. But I wanted to show you guys how I still use the things that I um, made my parfait out of and still managed to come up with some pretty nifty things like my fruit kebab. Um, out of pretzels. So I got these pretzel rods from the store. So you guys can use those. I also bought some pretzel squares because I was like, oh man, there's some, some cool things that I can make with my, my Greek yogurt um, with those pretzel squares. I'll show you guys as a bonus um, when we're all done. But you want to make sure you have your parents cut up your fruit for you. Um, and Zach, one of the kids that tried this recipe before, said that it was a little difficult because his fruit um, was a little wet and it made his pretzel soggy. So before you guys put your fruit on your pretzel rod, just um, dry it off a little bit with a paper towel like I have here. And then all you do is slide your fruit on one by one. So I chopped up some cantaloupe, I chopped up some kiwi, um, I chopped up some pears. And how I did my holes in my fruit, I used a little butter knife and I just cut a little teeny hole in the middle. And you can have your parents do this also um just so you know you're making sure you're not cutting it um yeah and i just went very creative Jeff. the center i tried of my fruit <laughs> and the hole doesn't need to be perfect but plus as a kid i really liked yeah. doing things in the kitchen too so, so i was always like my hole. parents trusted me with butter knives they were like all right this is the safest option for you so you know, why not use one at home if your parents let you and all you do is you slide it on and you're good to go. So you can use any fruit that you guys have at home. 
um, super cool. You can make as many fruit pieces on your kebab that you want to. You can lay them on your tray and have a little picnic inside with your uh -huh. your family. Um, yeah, or anyone you have around you as long as you guys are staying safe. But yeah, I so love it was one of the things that yeah. I made um, out of my fruit. Second thing I dropped a couple of recipe ideas for everyone at home at really the bottom of like the chat, so feel free to go there as well. Platters. So same concept. You can take your little pretzel tray and all I was using is my little Greek yogurt. You can smooth your yogurt onto your pretzel square. You can use any flavor yogurt. I think I ready. used vanilla for this. Um, and all I did was add on little blueberries. Or if I wanted like, what else do I have here? I got blues, blueberries, I have blackberries, I have raspberries. Um, I have bananas. So yeah. My so favorite are blueberries. want to make it, you just put a little yogurt. I agree. Right <laughs> I'm a fan. I love all fruits though. You can sprinkle granola on here if you want to. Oh, the granola is a good idea for sure. And you're basically setting up a whole picnic assortment. <laughs> what do you guys think? All right, so we've got oh, your kebabs. We have your fruit so square. And we have one more coming, I think, too, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. And I had so much leftover fruit. I was like, well, what else can I make? <laughs> so we can do one more. Like one more fruit square. Your parents chop up your fruit for you. Um, if you use berries, no need to chop up anything because they're all ready, ready for you. I agree, Heather. Um, you can freeze these. They're pretty good frozen because it gives your Greek yogurt a little crunch. Um, so you guys Ooh. can try that. Yep. Mm -hmm. One also cool thing that you guys can make out of the same ingredients that I'm going to leave you with is same concept. I'm using the candy cane. Had, That's a great I idea. Yeah. That is an sorry, awesome I idea. I love that. I'd love to see a picture of that. McKenna, that's um, going to be your job. Post a picture of you doing it with a candy cane. And you're just going to kind of... All right, so what are you making now, Tiff? Well, I had giant pieces of honeydew and cantaloupe left over, so I was like, well, what can I make out of a circle that has a hole in the middle? And I was like, pizza squares. <laughs> Perfect. Fruit pizza. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, once again, little, you can put your granola on it. You so can put you nuts can, on it. If you have nut allergies, you can do um, sunflower seeds or anything like that. And yeah, I was just kind of layering it with raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. You can go all the way around. Kind of use it as like your pepperonis. Your <laughs> oh yeah. Bring your eyes closer so you can see it. All right, let's see it. So basically, <laughs> it'll look like that. You can put bananas on bananas top. On it. Like I said before, <laughs> That's what your little um, kebab pieces will look like. I have my cup of coffee because I love coffee in the mornings. You can use cares. I use that yeah. too. So cheers. I hope you guys have fun. I definitely want to see your pizzas. <laughs> awesome. Thank oh, you, Chip. That was of course. awesome. Now, here's what I think is the coolest part about this uh, Tasty Tuesday is that it really highlights that you can just use whatever you have at home. Um, you know, obviously you went out and you got a bunch of fruit because that was what, you know, what you were planning on making, but you can pretty much use whatever you have in the house, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, if you don't have pretzel sticks, like McKenna said, she used a candy cane. Like I would have never thought of that. And that is genius. So if you guys come up with other things that you can use, or if you just have like regular little sticks and you don't have like an edible base you could just use the little sticks and then eat your your fruit off of your sticks so yep, yeah. all types of options oh perfect well tiff before we go i have a bunch of questions for you and you guys yeah. who are watching at home as always you can drop them in the comments if you have questions for tiffany as well but i want to know what a snack is that you always have with you during training i know for me i was always starving when i was an athlete and i always wanted to have like um a, almost like an emergency kit with me what do you always have with you <sighs> Well, one rule as a heptathlete is we never travel anywhere hungry, like ever. <laughs> There's zero chance you will find a heptathlete that does not have a snack with them. Um, so I have still carry that into bobsled. Um, my go-to, like you will always find me with this, is a red apple. Like hmm. someone, one of my teammates, <laughs> I had a video, we were in Utah and I was like literally flipping a sled and moving a sled and I had an apple in my mouth and he's like recording me, <laughs> hold this apple in my mouth and like move a, an extremely heavy sled, it's like plus 300 pounds. And yeah, I still had an apple in my mouth while maneuvering all of that. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God, I can see it. You're gonna have to find that picture for us. I um, will, I'll send you the video, it's pretty epic. <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, I know now that I'm not an athlete, sometimes I face some challenges with staying healthy. Uh, you also you also help people stay healthy, right? That's yeah. that's one of the other things that you do um, on your day to day. So tell me, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see people having? And with that, do you have any extra special tips for the kids who are watching at home? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say the biggest challenge for people is like eating consistently. So some people, because they're in a rush, will eat either like really big, uh, eat a really big breakfast and then go like really long hours until they have lunch or really long hours until they have dinner. Um, one important thing, not for just being an athlete, but just a basic human moving throughout the day is trying to eat as consistently as you can, even if it's like little small snacks. So if you can like, bring a, a banana or an apple or some crackers with you, like trying to eat just like in three hour chunks if you can, even if it's a little bit. So kind of spreading your meals out, if you have the capabilities to do that, uh, would be the biggest thing. So that way you're not just super, super, super hungry for dinner, and then you're just eating everything. And then you're like, oh man, I'm not hungry anymore until lunchtime the next day. So that would be the first thing is just spacing out your meals. Um, I would say the most important thing is drinking water. So there are a lot of people and kids and athletes included that um, really don't understand the importance of water and a very large majority, most of your body is made of water. So you have to drink like at least half of your body weight in ounces. So for me, I'm 160 pounds. So that means I need to drink 80 ounces of water because 80 plus 80 is 160. So you guys could do the math at home let, let us know if you want to. But yeah, making sure that you are drinking enough water in the day is super important because it'll help with your body function, which can, which can help with your movement and your activity and your mind and, and just your ability to focus. So water is super important. I relate to both of those things, Tiff. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good reminder for me as yeah. well. I definitely, <laughs> I mean, the, my next question for you was going to be what, really, really like when it comes down to it, why is it important? But I can tell you, if I don't eat consistently throughout the day, I am not a happy person. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's important for your body, right? But it's also important for your mind. Absolutely. And um, I mean, we talk about health and wellness all the time, and it's not just about allowing your body to move well. It's about allowing your mind to do its job as well. Um, they both work together. So you have to make sure that you fuel your body to be able to get through the movement. And for me, whether that's pushing a bobsled or before being a heptathlete and doing seven different events, like I needed to mentally be focused and ready for that as well as physically be ready. And the way that you do that and you prepare yourself is just by making sure you're getting in good, healthy snacks and drinking your water, and making sure that, um, yeah, you just do it consistently. I agree totally. So I'm I'm trying to drink my water as well. I don't know if you can see this, but this is my East Coast <laughs> Such cup. A cool, such a cool cup. This is this is <laughs> what I keep with me during the day. So I'm an East Coast girl. I live in Park City, Utah now, so I'm I'm way out in the West, but um, I like to remember my East Coast roots as well. My my aunt gave me this so that I could stay mm -hmm. hydrated as well. Um, so Tiff, cute. anything else that you want to share with the kids before we start wrapping up? Yeah, Dylan had a question. He said he'd love to like roast, <laughs> roast his kebab over fire. So cool thing that I kind of stumbled upon being at the training center and they actually cook for us here. One of the cooks made uh, fire roasted peaches, which like I had never had before. I didn't, I didn't never thought to grill fruit, but she put hers on fire and they were great. So, hey, I don't know. Um, you can tell me what fired pears taste like if your parents let you do it, Dylan. I think that it can happen. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you fire roasted peaches were really good. <laughs> awesome. But I would see what I would leave the kids with today. Um, just right now is just a crazy time. And so like Emily said before, like they mer there may be a lot of things that you guys don't have at your home and that's okay. Like you can make healthy snacks with what you have and it's all about just being creative and being adaptable. Uh, that's the big thing right now is making sure that A, you're having fun with what you're doing and cooking is supposed to be fun. So make it fun and keep it fun. Um, and you know what? Like enjoy it, have fun with your family, have fun with your friends. You guys can come up with cool recipes weekly and 
you FaceTime each other in the kitchen, however you have to do it. Um, I think that's the most important part is always have fun with what you're doing and yeah, just enjoy the process. Awesome. I think that's a perfect message to leave everyone with. <laughs> so you guys know we will always ask you to join us in a challenge. So please join us in making your own creative fruit kebab, fruit square, or fruit pizza. And you can share it with us on any social media using hashtag classroom champions. And I also want to encourage you guys, we are getting towards the end of our eight week challenge. So here is the link to the eight week challenge. Um, it's always on our Facebook page as well. You can post each week to earn a digital badge, which is super fun. We're in the last two weeks of it and we're talking about healthy living. So it's a perfect one to talk about today, but you can always start it at the beginning and go through all eight weeks of it as well. So join us at our eight week challenge and we will be back here again, you guys, on Thursday. You may have noticed that we're going a little bit closer to a Tuesday, Thursday schedule these days. It's because it's summer and everyone's starting to get outside. So we would love to see you here back on Thursday. We have Carly Lloyd on Thursday, you guys. We're going to do a special Creative Kids Thursday with Carly, who's a Team USA uh, volleyball player. So that should be a super fun Creative Kids Thursday. Tiffany, thank you for your time. I of also course. love Tasty Tuesday. I can't wait for another Tasty Tuesday next Tuesday as well. Yep, yep. <laughs> we'll see you guys then. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.